I'm Dan Addington, and uh, I was uh, born and raised out west, um, did college in Iowa, did a little bit of grad school in Arkansas, and then came up to uh, Illinois State in the early 90s to uh, do an MFA. Greger. Studied with Harold Greger, um, Ken Holder, and Harold Boyd, those three, and um, really enjoyed them all for different reasons, yeah. I did have a cohort of uh, students, and you were one of them, Doug Johnson, and uh, we uh, ended up in, a lot of us ended up in a house called the Gray House, because you might guess it was gray, and uh, we, uh, you know, everybody took a different room in the house, and I either was fortunate or unfortunate to have the living room, which is where everybody passed through, and so it was, it became a little bit of a hub at times, and uh, we all enjoyed having critiques in that, um, in that space, and, uh, you know, and all three of them, all three of the professors I just mentioned would come through and share their wisdom with us. I, um, I have general memories of a lot of the critiques I got from Ron Jackson and Ken Holder and Harold Boyd, and they would have ways of steering you gently in certain directions. So I have more uh, general ideas about what those critiques were like. I have really specific memories about um, Harold Greger's uh, critiques, and I like the. F I look back on them now fondly. Probably this is probably a common theme that you hear. I look on them more fondly now, maybe than at the moment. But that's great because uh, it was. It's obvious to me now that the point was to was to break certain ideas. You know, you enter into you enter into grad school in this interesting place where you already know enough stuff to make you dangerous, but not enough to necessarily be able to resolve an artwork in a, in a decent way, and, and, or it's going to be a lot of luck of the draw. And you've developed habits and ideas that you may not want to carry with you for the rest of your professional life, but you got them. And so it seems like uh, certainly one of the um, duties of a uh, of a professor would be to kind of break you of some of those bad habits that you've already, and and they might have different opinions of what some of those bad habits are. You know, what's one man's bad habit is another man's. What's one man's vice is another man's pleasure. So I don't know, but in that case, I think it was about drawing, and drawing is such a fundamental activity, and it's what a lot of painters will base, and especially if they're doing representational work, will base a lot of their painterly moves on what happens in that fundamental moment of doing drawings. And he took something that had to do with that, just that root basic idea of how you even hold a pencil or how you make, you know, that drawing motion with your hand that just um, obliterated the thing that I thought I was good at with just a simple comment. This wasn't even part of like a major critique. And, uh, and wow, you know, so that's all I could think about, right? For the next, I couldn't do a drawing after that. Because every time I'd do the thing, then I'd go, oh, I'm doing the thing. And then I'd be second guessing it. And, and, uh, and so now I look back on that. And I still, when I do drawings, um, I think about that little moment. Um, but I think it was, I'm confident that that was a really pivotal moment because it, kind of broke me out of the of a kind of a routine that was a crutch that I would hold on to. And I think it's probably something I picked up from some um, artist hero of mine somewhere down the line, and he just kind of swept it out the door. And so, yeah, that's one of them. That's one of those memories. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the common, uh, that's the common, attitude and comment that you hear all the time, right, about grad schools, you, all the time. People always say, um, you know, they taught me a lot about how to do paintings and stuff, but no one ever teaches you any of the professional stuff. And so when somebody, when you can kind of fly in the face of that and say, well, one guy did, uh, that's great. And um, you're right, though, I think that maybe that's changing now, probably depending on 
the institution. But, um, but it's cool that you could go to him and ask him those questions. And that does remind me of a very, uh, of, a, of a story that um, I have uh, this one memory that I have a lot of fondness for. And um, I had come back from my first year of working on the MFA um, after the summer. And during that summer, I had um, entered a, uh, a competitive exhibition at um, the Evansville Museum of Art, Evansville, Indiana, and, had, and was shocked to discover that I had uh, gotten the uh, um, purchase award in that show and, uh, and went down for it. And, and you know, it, it was like a real kind of boost. And I came back, and um, people were kind of coming to school. And I had parked my uh, little pickup up uh, on the parking uh, area where I wasn't supposed to park to unload a bunch of stuff. And I saw um, Harold coming out of the door. And he walked right up to me. And he, he and I didn't like pal around or anything, you know. Um, and I don't know that he had spoken a lot to to me outside of classrooms, honestly, at that point at least. And he came right up to me and said, congratulations. And, and uh, I went, why? What? If for making it back here to the, or to get this parking spot? And, uh, and he goes, no, uh, I heard about your, uh, your award. I got that award when I was your age. And um, no, you know what? He didn't say when I was your age, but he did say, I got that award. Um, he wouldn't have been in Illinois at the time, uh, but at some at some point in when he was in the Midwest, he had entered that same show, had also gotten the Purchase Award, and that meant so much to him that he had this common point of connection. You could tell, and he was like, "Man, that was the kick in the pants that really got me going," and uh, and he said, "You know, my career kind of really started at that point," and I uh, I was like just, I, I, I was so kind of proud, you know, that, that he was kind of just, that I had done something that was worthy of him commenting on. Because honestly, that dude intimidated me. And that first year, especially, I just found him really intimidating. I didn't feel that there was an, an ease of conversation and joking around in the same way that a couple of the other professors and I had. And that really changed my opinion or my feelings about kind of pushing through that. So the courses that I took that had him, and I think I signed up for more courses then, and, um, and uh, our uh, rapport really changed after that. Well, you know, it's true whenever somebody in an authority figure that you, your basic relationship with them is one of awe and, and looking up to them, um, when someone like that peels back a layer and reveals themselves in just those little moments, I mean, that's what you grasp a hold of, those moments. And when, and when that happens, you know, there are little turning points in these kind of educational um, relationships that you have. And so they stick with you. Those little moments, uh, you look back on them fondly. Um, yeah. And I also felt that he represented landscape painting so much that he came with it wasn't just him entering the room, it was him and the school of landscape painting that he represented entering into your studio and stuff. And I guess, and at that time, landscape painting just barely even felt like a genre to me that I was interested in. And um, that has since changed. But at the time, uh, I, it was more about his attention to color. And I think that that was my connection to, to him it wasn't so much about genre, but it was about color. And I was intimidated by color, too. I was intimidated by, um, by uh, Gregor, and I was intimidated by color. And uh, they went hand in hand at ISU. And um, I was looking at people like Rembrandt and Caravaggio, people that had kicked out color a long time uh, you know, ago for me. And, um, and so he, that was also challenging to kind of go, Okay, I'm gonna. I'll open myself up to these ideas about color, even though I have my own reasons for not really worrying about that. It's all going to be about value and stuff. And um, and so that was him kicking open a door 
in those color uh, theory classes as well. Yeah. yeah. And I, I liked the fact that I found access to him and his work through some of those kind of formal ideas. You know, so it was hard for me to really pull anything out of the more realistic landscape pieces. But man, those, those flatscapes, um, that was where it was at. You know, when, you looked at the, when I looked at those, I was looking at a, a really beautifully constructed abstract painting that was just all about, you know, um, accepting and rejecting Hans Hoffman ideas and Albers and, you know, whoever else, and, uh, and really about uh, embracing what color can do. And him talking about how color creates space. And using, maybe, I don't know if I'm right here, using the phrase color formed space, I, I say that, I repeat that all the time when I'm talking to, um, to artists now at, at the gallery. And, and by the way, speaking of the gallery, that's not a plug, but I, wanna, <laughs> I just want to say that um, after I graduated, moved up to Chicago, and one thing led to another, and then that led to another, and I found myself involved in the gallery world up there, guess who came to the gallery more often than anyone else I think that I knew from ISU, let alone professors, but certainly professors. It was, it was Harold Greger, and he'd come by um, for, you know, for, for somebody from Bloomington, he came by frequently, and, um, and then I would see him at the art fairs, always, and I thought that was cool, and so it was, you know, I mean, I had more conversations with him um, post-graduation probably than, um, than I had previously. And, and then the floodgates were open. It was kind of like, you know, I, he didn't have to hold a, a position of, I'm the professor, you're the student, maybe. I mean, I might be just projecting or whatever there, but, uh, but it, and I certainly didn't ever think of him as a peer, but he treated our conversations that way afterwards. And that was really, I was like, I didn't know this guy was so warm, you know? And so um, my perspective on Harold Greger just continued to change all the way, you know, and decades after yeah. I was down here at school. Yeah.